Hey, well, kids. How you doing? Now, today, we're in somewhere really new. We've not been here before. And because of that, I think we've had quite a bit of trouble with our signal. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another video for you just so that you can see all the beautiful things that we've seen because it's been amazing and some of the stuff you've not been able to see. So we're going to show you again, if that's OK. Come and have a look at this guy. Oh, don't go through the web. <laughs> web. Oh, look over here. So now look at this big mound here. Is it because the rangers have been super tidy and been on a mission to tidy everything up? Because it's really high. Or is it because of my friend Mortimer, the bush turkey over here, who is scrabbling around and scraping everything away, tidying up because that's his job? No, 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 no. He's scrabbling around and scraping away and building this great big mound because he is trying to impress a potential girlfriend because this is the mound nest of the bush turkey. It's a brilliant and genius idea because eggs of birds are one of the best food sources for lots and lots of different animals in the bush. So snakes like eating eggs, possums like eating eggs, bandicoots like eating eggs, goannas like eating eggs. So many different animals eat eggs. And being a good parent, the bush turkey does not want its eggs eaten. So what it does is it builds this great big mound when the girlfriend comes along, she thinks, oh, yeah, that's a nice one. She digs a hole in the middle and lays her eggs in the middle of the nest and then covers it over and then leaves it. Because if they stayed by the nest, that would attract the attention of predators as well. And I'll just walk through that spider's web. <laughs> that spider's web. So the other important thing is because Australia is so hot, Having the eggs deep inside this mound, it keeps it at a regular temperature so the sun doesn't make the eggs too hot and cook them or it doesn't get too cold and freeze them. So it's absolutely a really, really clever way of um, protecting the eggs and having the most success in having them hatch. Now, up in the trees at the moment, there are loads of birds. I don't know if you can hear them because we've got cockatoos, we've got corellas, there are splendid wrens, there's little um, fire tails, and down here is the reason why. We are on the edge of a lake and all animals need water and what better source of uh, water than a lake. This one's a bit different though and I'll show you that in a minute. Now down here look it's really, really wet and boggy. And you can see signs of lots of animals that have been scavenging around. Now, holes like this, a big snuffle holes and dig holes like this, could have been made by bandicoots. I think probably bandicoots, actually, because of their big noses going inside and snuffling out, looking for beetles and grubs that have been buried because lots and lots of animals lay eggs in soil not just the bush turkey. Lots of beetles and grubs and things like that would lay. This is the perfect kind of um, soil for them because it's very sandy and it's easy to dig. So they're going to put all their eggs in there. And over here is another brilliant thing. Because it's so damp and wet, we get lots and lots of different lichens and fungus. So this tree is perfect. Now, lots of trees around here. We've got lots of she oaks around here and she oaks um, rot down really, really quickly. So there, um, because it's so wet here as well, that accelerates everything. So remember when you're pulling um, and looking underneath any logs, always roll it towards you. So if anything scratch your bitey, it can scamper away. Oh, look, hello. Is that a skink? Is that a little lizard? <gasps> it's, it's a slow worm. Wow. That's not a snake. It's a legless lizard. 
Oh, look, look at you. Look at you. <gasps> oh, goodness me. You are a metal. Look. <laughs> so, this is a slow one. Now, slow ones are actually lizards. They are not snakes. They are a legless lizard. And the only thing he's interested in getting is bugs, not us. So these are actually really good in your garden. We get them in our gardens. Don't be confused with it thinking it's a snake because it is not. It's completely different. Um, you can tell by the, uh, the skin, the way it moves, lots and lots of um, the way its head moves and the shape of its mouth. Have a look at them online. Have a look at, look at do some research on them. They are glorious. But they're a reptile, the same as snakes, where they need the sun to warm up and they'll be protecting themselves because he's only a baby. They can grow up to about um, 30 centimetres long. And what an absolute treasure. Amazing. I'm going to just roll this back now. Big win. Big win. How excited. <laughs> now. I could go home now. Should we go? No, I'm not going to because there's so much more to see. So come and have a look over here. So we've got all these rushes here. These are grasses. These grasses are actually adapted so they can grow really tall and have their um, seeds um, blowing in the wind and they spread really, really well and they're really successful. And these types of grass here, these are brilliant in these marshy conditions as well because they can handle the salt and the trees love it because what happens is anything that washes down yeah, I'm getting to that, guys. Lots of cockatoos around here. And hear that? Tick, 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 tick. That is the twitter of a wren. And if we can see some superb wrens, we saw some earlier and hopefully we'll see them again. They're a little bit shy though, but they are the most beautiful birds. Did they just get the most popular bird in Australia? Well, they did. And funny you should mention about birds and birds in Australia because um, we. Next week, I'm going to be doing the Great Aussie Backyard Bird Count. Now, I'm going to send you a sheet and I'm going to send you a link for a sheet. Yeah, like you up there. You. Yes, you. You can't see him. He's, he's, he's too well hidden. This beautiful little bird up there. There he goes. And what we're going to do in our gardens or in our parks, we are going to do the Great Aussie Backyard Bird Count. And you count all the species. And there's a link online through um, BirdLife Australia where you can actually get a brilliant little app for your phone and you can count all the birds that you see in your garden and it's really really great thing to do because you get to know what's what's around and that means that you could probably uh, maybe change the way that you have your garden you could put some bushes in that actually support the birds that come to visit you that's a really important thing to do now through here look it's all, it's all breaking down we've still got some uh, introduced species though this here we've got this asparagus fern that's not that's that's really invasive and um, the, uh, yeah, really, the, really sh the uh, native plants really, really struggle with this. And we've got some like, penny warts around here, lots of different things. Lots of mosquitoes because we're by stagnant water. Oh, look, little jumping beetles here. Loads of interesting things going on. This is a, like the perfect conditions. We've had a lot of rain this week as well. So everything's really, really damp and all the insects and all the animals are making the most of all this brilliant rain and weather we've had. So we can have a look, all these things here. Look, so now here, look at all this water here. Now this is because it's quite a high tide today and we're actually at the lake. It's a tidal lake. So sometimes the water is actually not here and it's just mud. And in that mud, we've got little mud crabs. We've got lots of shrimps, lots of baby fish. And th these little, little bits like this, where the, the fingers of the water, just the little fingers of water just reaching in up into deeper into bits of the land are the perfect nurseries for baby fish. And there's lots and lots of little spratlings um, in uh, this time of year. And what we're going to do, come with me and I'll do a bit of pond dipping. It's one of my favourite things to do. And here is a great spot for it. Now, the interesting thing about this lake, lots of lakes generally are freshwater. But this, whoopsie, salt water because we're very near to the ocean and we are, um, um, it's got a, it's got a, um, a, a, 
a gateway where when it comes high tide, the salt water pushes in and mixes with the fresh water from the, the rivers that pour into this lake. So it's got a mix. It's not as salty as a normal sea, but it's, it's, it's salty all the same. So with that in mind, we have all these different um, types of trees that are here that can actually um, handle living in salty conditions. So we've got mangroves here. We've got the she oaks that really don't mind it being really boggy and wet. And all these lichens as well. Look at all these lichens. Have you ever seen so much lichen? That's because the air is so damp here. Even like, you know, um, first thing in the morning, there, there's always mists that are hanging over this water. So it's absolutely brilliant for so many different things. Now, what we're gonna do is just use this little simple net and we're gonna see what we can catch. Now, come it fast through the water. See if there's anything there. No. Nothing there yet. So what we can do as well, there's two ways you can do it. You can, if you see some fish, you can go in and quickly scoop them. Or the other way is to go down into where the bushy, little um, bits of um, plants are and shimmy along and shizzle, stir up the bottom because lots of bugs live in the bottom of the, um, around in the mud. It's a lot more interesting in the mud than it is floating around in the water because, oh, here we are. Check out these. So in here, these are the mangrove seeds. Oh, look, and we've got a little like, beetle here, look. Let's turn him over. There, see this guy? Look at this guy. See his little legs at the back? He's looking like a tiny little bit of um, stick or a little seed. It's actually a little water beetle. And just by that little scoop there, we've got tiny, tiny little bugs skittering around. Um, some of them are so small, you can barely see them. And I'm just gonna go, let me just do one more dip, see what we can find. Anything in there? Nope, just some reeds. Let's do one more dip. You could do this as many times as you like. So quickly move it over to the water, plonk it in. I've got some reeds there and bits of grass. Now, lots of the, the bugs hide on this. They're so small, they can hide behind these little bits of um, grass. And then we can see what we can find. Now, let's have a look here. So, in here, Let's have a look. You've got to be very gentle. You don't want to smash it around. But what can we see there? Ah, there's a little shrimp. There we go. There he is. Little tiny shrimp. There's another. And there's a fish. Cool, a little sprattling. Like I said before, areas like this where the mangroves are there's, the mangroves have lots and lots of roots holding them into the um, very very unstable mud so hey, look at the shrimp there look see this guy see him They're amazing so small he's absolutely transparent and that's actually protection for them so like i say the, the roots of the mangrove that are here are the perfect nurseries for um for baby fish and small fish species and also for little shrimps, because the big predator fish can't actually get in to, um, to um, eat them. Now, the mangroves themselves are a genius plant. Have a look at this. Now this is the mangrove seed. Now look at down there, that's the root. Now this is floating. And what will happen is it will drop off the, the branches, land in the water, get pushed along by a bit of wind. It's almost like a sail, isn't it? It's actually like a little sailing boat. And what will happen is that little root will land like that in some mud and some silt. And it's got enough energy here already to make that root go bigger and bigger and bigger and longer and longer and longer and establish itself in the mud and the soil that's here. And then grow into one of these beautiful mangrove trees and then what will happen is the silt and the mud will gather and collect more and more and more and more and more, creating land. And 
the brilliant thing about all of these things is that you can see these very close to near where you live. It's, it's all going on around you where you are. Now, when you're by water, you've got to be careful because obviously, you know, you don't want to fall in, you don't want to get too wet, but it also can be lots and lots of fun. As well as doing pond dipping, you can get creative and you can make things that float and make some boats yourself. Now, what I've done here, I've made a little raft. Just got some sticks off the ground, like, you know, there you go, look, boom. Just like these guys, there's one, that's perfect. Nice straight sticks. And all I've done is made some, wound it around. You kind of like, do you know, do like a figure eight. So up and over, over and under, up and over, over, under. And you tie them together. And I put a couple of braces like this. Now there's a couple of things you could do. You could put a little squidge of um, plasticine or mold, modeling clay on the top there. Stick a stick in it, put a bit of paper, and then oh, you can make a sail. But I've made this very, very quickly earlier. And shall we see if it floats? Yeah? Should we give it a try? Now, what we're going to do, we're going to push it out from here and see if it works. Hey, it works! We have a raft! Look at that. Isn't that cool? And this is stuck by all the other things. I'm just going to push it out through the thing and that's brilliant because everything there is natural even the strings natural so it can can break down and what will happen is we could have little bugs land on that so that could be amazing couldn't it you can make one of those why don't you show me some pictures of the things that you can make and the things you do with water because water can be so much fun anyway i hope you enjoyed our little extra bit of uh, wild kids today sorry about the broadcast because it's such a shame when we lose the signal but that's life anyway Enjoy, show me what you do, and I'll see you really, really soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.